It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, we all have a passion, something that inspires us and motivates us. And for me, that passion lies at the intersection of music and social justice. In 2009, I started a global hip hop project called Raptivism or Rap Activism. And I started the project with a vision to challenge apathy with awareness, ignorance with innovation, and oppression with expression. I started the project by traveling to, over the span of 13 months, six different countries and living in those countries, collaborating with hip hop activists to create a, comp a compilation album. Eventually that continued to grow and to this day I've traveled to over 12 different countries and four continents and had the honor of working in solidarity with different hip hop communities and media makers in order to continue to further social justice through culture. Now, many people may know me as a raptivist, as someone who has a love of language and writes lyrics and a love of languages. What they may not know is that my first grade teacher used to call my mom complaining and saying, why did you do your daughter's homework? Why did you cheat? And when my mom said she didn't make me help her do her homework or I didn't do it for her, my teacher refused to believe my mom. She would say, there's no way that a young woman that looks like that and is of that age would ever be capable of writing something like this, so advanced, using metaphors and similes. A lot of people may know me as someone who has a love of travel and is a global citizen. What they may not know is over 14 different times I woke up to hate crimes in my neighborhood, that someone had slashed my family's tires as one of the few families of color, and it made it difficult to get to school, much less travel halfway around the world to work with hip hop activists. 
People may know me as a hip hop head, someone who has a love of the culture. What they may not know is that in my high school and middle school, people would actually laugh at me for my love of hip hop. They would say it was weird. They'd make fun of my hip hop gear that I would wear and the fact that I would be the only person getting down at high school and middle school dances while everyone else was a wallflower exchanging gossip from that evening. Now, along this path of me pursuing my passion, there were a lot of challenges, a lot of circumstances along the way that might say, stop, turn back, give up. But there was also something more profound. Some might call it an intuition. I had to listen to my heart, to know that I had a sense of purpose that ran much deeper and was much more profound than any of these little speed bumps that happened along the way. And in fact, these speed bumps gave me more momentum, as L Boogie, Lauren Hill might say, flip a negative into a positive picture, using that energy to transform it to further the vision, to fuel the fire, so to speak. Now, I think that sometimes these challenges that pop up along the way are not just ones that pop up by circumstances that happen in our life or by what other people say, but also sometimes that happens within ourselves. That voice of self-doubt, of fear that sometimes creeps in, in particular, this makes me think of when I moved to Casablanca, Morocco, in order to work with raptivism. And I had met a, a lot of incredible hip hop activists there, and we started all these recording projects. And it wasn't always easy traveling as a woman alone um, and figuring out how to finish up those projects. And we weren't making the progress that I wanted to in the amount of time that we had. There were a lot of challenges, road bumps. And then I heard about this incredible singer named Um and she was collaborating with all of my favorite hip hop groups across the nation. And I heard her songs on the radio and started to look into it and eventually saw her perform live. And when she opened her mouth, the whole audience transformed. They were moved, something opened up. And I thought to myself while standing at that festival, it would be incredible. I would love to collaborate with her. She's an incredible artist and I know there's some sort of resonance there. I should pursue that. So after she got off stage, I found my way backstage. It took a little extra finagling, even though I had a press pass. And I figured out where her band was sitting. Everyone was chilling. And I was like, okay, this is your opportunity. You gotta go talk to her, make it happen. And I froze. I was really nervous and I was like, oh, okay, what are they gonna say? Is that weird if I go up and introduce myself? Oh my gosh, right? So I'm standing there for a few minutes just debating about what to do. And eventually I took a deep breath and even though I was scared, I think my feet started moving first and I made my way over and introduced myself to the group. And I told them a little bit about raptivism and then we exchanged a few words and she mentioned, hey, I'm going on tour in a few weeks. And I said, almost without even realizing that the words were coming out of my mouth, well, if you ever need a background singer. And she said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Why don't you sing something? <sighs> As if I wasn't nervous enough already, like my heart starts palpitating, right? I break out into a cold sweat. The whole band's like, <laughs> right? And the first thing that came to mind was this Kevin Michael song. Um, it goes, it don't make any difference to me what the world thinks about us, baby. Cause in my heart, I will always believe that we were meant for each other. Love ain't got no color, it don't make any difference to me what they see. And as I opened my eyes, I looked around and the band started to exchange approving glances. And then she looked at me and said, why don't you come meet us in the studio next week? I would love it if you would join us on tour. So then that following week, I learned how to sing along to her songs, not, not only in English, but in French as well as Arabic. And then the week after that, we started to tour all over the world, including the Pyrenees Mountains in Spain and the Mawazine Festival put on by the King of Morocco alongside headliners like B.B. King and Sting. And none of that would have happened has I had, had I hesitated and let that fear win over. Had I just stood there and go, oh no, this is stupid and walked away, right? 
it happened from me taking that step to step out of my comfort zone, to, to dare to do a healthy risk, right? To believe. And I think that this journey of believing in ourselves, of freeing our minds beyond the limitations that we might hear or feel, is not just something that happens on an individual level. This is something that we can share with one another, with our neighbor. In fact, this reminds me of one of my students whom I met while working in the San Francisco school district when I just moved to the Bay. And I remember before I even started working with her, I heard a lot of things. I heard that she came from a house that was not so loving. In fact, there was a lot of violence in her home and she experienced a lot of trauma early on in her life and that played out in the classroom environment. And a lot of the teachers then would tell me things like, oh, she's a bad kid, watch out for her, she's dangerous, she's not very smart, you know, she doesn't do her homework. And then she would sometimes overhear them saying these things and that would amplify her behavior. She would throw a chair or hit one of her peers or start banging on the table. And my first step to working with her one-on-one -on -one was listening, getting to know her. And I learned some new things. One, that she writes in a diary every single day and chronicles her experiences and feelings. Two, that she has a love of bright colors and loves to draw and make designs. Three, she's a voracious reader. She loves fiction and poetry in particular. Keeping in mind some of these other threads, these incredible aspects of her personality, I started to brainstorm what could we do not only to acknowledge the negative things that people saw in her or believed that she encompassed, but all the incredible talents and greatness that she encompasses. So I, caught, I thought up an idea to put on slips of paper, pieces of poetry, motivational quotes, some words from my favorite authors. And I put it in a hat, and any time she did something that she felt that she was proud of in class, or if she was having a hard day and just needed some inspiration, she could pull one of those quotes from the hat. I remember one of them in particular was a Rumi poem, and it said something along the lines of, you were born with wings. You were not meant for crawling, so don't. You have wings. Learn to use them and fly. And over time, I noticed that she started to collect these slips of paper and tuck them safely away in her binder, and she would read them and reread them every day, meticulously. And after days, weeks, even months, her actions started to change. She turned in more of her homework. She would finish problems early in class and then help her peers figure it out. She would draw and create these handmade cards for her teachers as a sign of appreciation for all the work they had put into creating the lesson plan. She even started to do more and more problem solving outside of the class, joining clubs, figuring out how she could get more involved in the campus community. And all of a sudden with this change, the opinions of the teachers also changed. They said, wow, she's such a good kid. Wow, she's so creative and artistic. And from the beginning of this story till now, she was the same young woman with the same great potential, right? The same greatness that she encompassed. And I think part of that change was her shifting her perspective on herself and knowing that her experiences, although they definitely make an impact on our lives, don't necessarily have to define exactly how she has to act or who she has to become. All these other people's expectations. She's freeing her mind, imagining who she wants to be, empowered to make her own choices as well, not just the stereotypes that people might have imposed. Now, I think this art of freeing our mind is important not only on an individual and an interpersonal level, but also on a societal level. The freedom songs of the civil rights movement, some of the anthems of change we're seeing everywhere from Senegal and West Africa where hip hop artists have mobilized to change some of the results of even the most recent elections, to North Africa and the Middle East where we're seeing so much political change and a lot of cultural change going with that to help envision a world that's different than the one that we see now. To dare to use our imagination to see beyond the status quo. Angela Davis says we have to talk about liberating minds as well as liberating society. Part of freeing our minds, part of imagining what a better world looks like is not just pretending that there's always a box to think in, but to realize perhaps there's no box at all. That said, I'll conclude on a hip hop note, because y'all know 
I'm a raptivist. How many of y'all have heard of a breakbeat? Breakbeats? Okay. So a breakbeat is made up of what in music is called the break, right? Typically, it's characterized as this part in the music that happens between the main parts of the song. And in hip hop especially, we love those really percussive, funky drummer type break beats. And the breakbeat in particular is really special in hip hop because that's the moment when people get on the dance floor, the b-boys, the b-girls, anyone who wants to get down, that's when we feel most evoked to move, to get free, to show all of our best potential through our movement, right? Now, we all have main parts of the song, good and bad, whether that be the media messages we hear or the encouragement from others or the expectations that might ping our ears on a daily basis. We have these main parts of the song. I challenge you to find your breakbeat. Where is that space where you feel the most free? Where is that space where you can show off all of your greatest moves and fulfill your greatness and not be afraid of it? Can you hear it? Turn off the stereotypes. Assign me a category and I'll give you a scattergory. Let justice roll forth like a mighty stream. A true individual is one that dares to dream. What are you looking for in the mirror when the deepest part of you lies within a beauty that does not stop at the skin? What race are you a part of? Because I'm racing with my dreams. Every day I wake up to an inner passion that screams curiosity, beads up and rolls down my face, a spiritual perspiration, inhaling inspiration, exhaling innovation. Aspirations in my life's blood driving my circulation. Unruly is the heart that tries to house an evolving soul. Fueling an inner fire, an inner passion with an ever burning coal. Stop looking for who you are in other places. You will never come to recognize your own potential in other faces. Only you can choose the path that falls below your feet. Oppressive expectations, limitations are shackles of self-defeat. No ancestor fought for our freedom only to see us retreat. The confines of passivity are likened to the cage of a bird in prisons, a song never to be heard, but one vision can change the world, planting the seeds to a grassroots movement waiting to go unfurled. I said, free on mine, and the rest will follow. Don't have to be colorblind. Just don't be so shallow. I said, free your mind, and the rest will follow. Whoa. Don't have to be colorblind. Just don't be so shallow. Arigato, merci. Jai, Jai. Gracias. <laughs>